Hi everyone. I would like to talk to you today about a very special bow stroke called Legero. And we usually don't confront Legero in our studies until we see it in a solo that we're supposed to play or in orchestra and we have no idea what it is. So I want to tell you what it is and show you a easy way to achieve it and to practice it and work on it. So Legero, spelled L-E-G-G-I-E-R-O, Legero, the, the word, the pronunciation describes exactly what it is. Gero, Gero. It's a really brushy form of spiccato, but it's mostly on the string. It doesn't really bounce the string. It sounds kind of off-ish, but it's also on-ish. Sorry to be so non-committal, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. If I had to describe a Legero based on other bowings that we're familiar with, I would say it's like a detaché stroke with an element of lure. Lure is is the the kind of the hooked bow, but it's not stopped hooked. It's speed bump hooked. Lure is created by bow weight changes, but not bow stoppages. Another word for lure is portato. And if we're really being geeky, uh, the old fashioned word for lure and portato is parlando. And you'll see that word in old, old manuscripts and it's hard to figure out what they mean by parlando. It just means lure or portato. Anyway, I'm starting to digress. So it, um, a legero is like a detaché with an element of the lure in it um, and an element of spiccato, but not truly off the string. It's your brushiest spiccato that you could possibly imagine. And now I'm repeating myself. So let's get into the weeds with what the Legero is. Um, let me demonstrate it first of all. Hear how brushy it is and lispy and wispy. Legero. <laughs> So the most preferred place to play a Legero, I would say, is the upper half, but there's plenty of instances where you need a Legero in the middle, and to a lesser extent, no, uh, you can't ignore it. You need it in the lower third as well. So you'll want to practice a Legero stroke in the upper half, middle half, and lower half. Let's just divide it in halves, because then we get lots of overlap and lots of flexibility. Okay, so let's get more specific. What is a Legero? Legero is accomplished by playing sul tosto. That's uh, otherwise known as playing over the fingerboard, sul tosto. It also uses an element called flautando, which I tell my students, just think of it as flotando. The bow floats. It's very light airy bow and that's why it's called flautando because it's like a flute air passing through the tone so it's sul tosto plus flautando over the fingerboard very light bow um you will practice it in all areas of the bow and it's greatly assisted by tilting your bow so tilt the stick toward the scroll and your hair towards you um, just try it. Let's try it in the middle half of the bow, out over the fingerboard, like lane five. Tilt that bow, nice gentle bow hold. And, and just watch me for just a second. I'm making little U shapes. There's a weight a weight change in the bow where it's heavy for just slightly heavy for just a moment but it, then it goes light starts light dips down ends light okay so 
listen to my sound and then just try to create it yourself. That's in the middle. I'll let you pause as you need to. Let me show you the upper half. the lower half. And I'm tilting the bow because that just makes it so much easier. So practice it in all three areas. Now that's with separate bow strokes. Often Legero is done in a hooked fashion where you have to do several Legere in a row in one bow like this. lot of times that's what they want when they say lure they want a leggero lure so um, just be aware that those two terms can overlap so I would start on open strings do all four open strings do all three areas of the bow I would start with separate notes one leggero stroke per bow and then I would start doing two per bow, still on open strings. And learn to make two distinct notes, but with no stop in the tone. That's a little too much silence. If you can see my horse hair, I'm trying to exaggerate. It's going heavy. Okay, then work on three per bow and then four. Go as high as you want. Then you can start playing some songs. You can do a scale, you can do children's songs, anything you want. The best one, the song I love to teach Legero on you have to know the song and not everyone who hasn't done Suzuki knows the song but it's really easy to learn by ear and you can probably find the sheet music online. Um, it's perpetual motion and I like it because it is well it stays on one string for a long time so you're not encumbered by string crossings. Let me play uh, per and you can start on other strings as well you can start on the A string and play perpetual motion on the D string and on the G string it works wonderfully. Let me show you the original key starting on the A string with single reps. perpetual motion. Even if you only learn the first part, it will still serve you well. That's the original perpetual motion, but then Suzuki people do what's called the variation, and it's where you play each note two times. I like that the very best. I should have just started with that. Because it, it slows down the, the rigors of the left hand, and you can focus more on your bow. So instead of playing A, B, C, C, B, C, D, D, you play A, A, B, B, C, 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 and repeat every note twice, like this. It also allows you to start every new note with a down bow, 
which keeps things predictable. It just makes it easy. And using that variation, you can then begin your Legiro hooks, your hooked bows, like this. So that's enough to get you started, enough to let you know what Legiro is, and enough to give you something to work on it and to improve it. If you would like to apply this Legiro skill to more advanced pieces, I have two tune kits on my website for sale. They're ten dollars each. You get tons of instruction and sheet music and piano play-alongs and play-alongs with me, lots of stuff included. But they teach these songs and they reinforce what I've just told you about Legiro. They are called the Chrysler Rondino on a theme by Beethoven. So the song is by Fritz Chrysler, but it's based on a Beethoven theme. I just call it the Chrysler Rondino. And the other one is also by Fritz Chrysler, and it's called Okasan and Nicolette. Two beautiful, really um, gratifying songs to play, and they utilize this Legiro stroke in a really violinistic way. So, feel free to come to my website, uh, reddesertviolin.com, or you can see the links that are down below in the video description box. And uh, that's Legiro. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.